Hey, I'm Chris, and this is the first in a series of videos where I take the Ender 5, perform a simple upgrade, and make it an even better printer here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So after my original Ender 5 review, I've had a lot of comments and requests to do some follow-up videos about this printer. Today I'm going to start a series of videos that take a look at the upgrades that can be performed to make this an even better printer. I'm going to start with some simple ones, such as today, which I'm going to be doing the extruder. The original extruder that came with the printer was all plastic. It was a little too loose and it just had a lot of give in it. So today's drop-in replacement is an aluminum extruder. All of the parts are exactly the same as the original, but they're just made out of anodized aluminum. So let's take a look at how that's done. So here's the original extruder. Like I mentioned, this is all plastic. It has a fair amount of give to it. It just doesn't feel solid. And every time I have to change the filament out, I feel like it's just a little too loose. And I might even break it. So first step, what we're gonna do is we need to take out the existing filament. So if it is already in the hot end, you're gonna actually have to heat the printer up, do a push and pull to get the filament out. But once you've got the filament coming out, you can just pull it all the way. At that point, let's take off the spool to get it out of our way. And now we're free to get the, to the extruder to take out the screws. So for this job, we're actually only going to use the original tools that came with the printer. These are three of the medium-sized Allen wrenches that it came with. To get started, let's first remove the Bowden tube. That comes right out. Just pull down, pull up, and the Bowden tube will come right off. Then we can get that out of our way. Next up, we're going to take our medium-sized Allen wrench. And we can start taking the extruder arm off. Now, make sure you hold this in place so that when the spring is loose, it doesn't come flying apart. And then once it comes loose, you'll feel it snap. We're going to take off this whole assembly here. After the arm's rem been removed, we're going to go to the next size down Allen wrench. Then we're going to start removing these four, uh, the three remaining corner screws. I'm going to pull this one off. Make sure you save this screw. We may need it again later. I'm going to take off this far corner one. And then if that doesn't come out, that's fine. But try to get it out so you don't lose it. And then for the final screw, make sure that you're holding your extruder motor while you take this off, otherwise it will fall. So if you can, hold both of these parts so that you don't lose them when the screw comes out. Then you can pull this screw out, take the front of the extruder off, and then rest your uh, extruder motor on your build plate. Here we are with the new extruder. As I mentioned, this is a red anodized aluminum extruder. They're all the same. I've seen them at Banggood, GearBest, Amazon, and I'll leave some links in the description. Let's take a look at how this is assembled. I've laid it out here the way it's going to go together. So let's first put together the extruder arm. This is the extruder arm. First of all, let's take the red anodized insert as well as the longer of the socket head screws. I'm going to put those in there. Those just drop in for now. Next, we're going to take the idler wheel. We're going to take a lock washer. And then we're going to take this socket head screw and put it right in here. So at this point, we're going to need one of our larger Allen wrenches. We're going to tighten this down all the way. Not over tighten, but the idler wheel should still spin if it's assembled correctly. Next up, we're going to take this M3 screw. This M3 screw will not go all the way through. This will hold one side of our spring. So we can hand screw that in until it's almost all the way down. We'll grab a smaller Allen wrench to tighten that into place. Again, you don't need to over tighten this, just make sure it's snug. Now we're done with the extruder arm. Next up, we only have one thing to add to this piece. We're going to add the hose uh, adapter to the top. I'm going to tighten that down just a little bit. And actually, we do have one other screw. 
we have to put this screw in here that's going to hold the other end of our spring. Again, we're going to just tighten that down all the way. There we go. Now this extruder also came with a new gear. We're not going to need that for this assembly because this is exactly the same as the gear it came with. So we won't be replacing that. Now let's go over to our printer and attach this to our extruder motor. Here we are back at the printer. Again, let's grab the extruder motor. We'll put that back through. I'm going to take this new assembly, put it right on here, again with the hose adapter facing up. First of all, let's take one of our M3 screws, just put it in the most convenient hole to get this mounted so that it holds the motor in place. I'm going to get that attached. move things around if things don't line up quite right. Don't over tighten this. We're going to make sure that we get all of these screws in place first. We can put the one in the next corner. This will get the top all lined up. And we don't need to tighten these down quite yet. Let it move a little bit. And the screw that mine came with is actually too short for this printer. So what I ended up doing is just grabbing the original screw that I took off the, the original uh, mount and I'm going to use that on this one. And then notice on this one, this is a flathead screw. It's recessed into the mount so that it doesn't hit the extruder arm. The other two up top are pan head screws. And finally, let's take our extruder arm, which we already have assembled, and we're going to take the spring that it came with. Get this in here a little bit. I'm going to try to just get our spring lined up. And then everything will just seat into place. There we go. So we're going to grab our largest Oh, no, on this one, it's actually not that big. We're actually going to go with the medium sized one. We're going to tighten that down. And on this printer, you should be able to tighten that all the way down. And this will still move. If you're not comfortable with that, you can back it off just a little bit. And it should move a little bit easier. All right, once the extruder is assembled, let's grab the hose. I'm going to plug it back in here. That should slide all the way back in. Make sure it slides in until it stops. Now this extruder is ready for some new filament. So I've got some filament ready to go. I'm going to put it back up into the extruder. And we feed it up. Now let's try a test print. Make sure everything's assembled correctly.
with the calibration cats off the printer. It looks about like I expected, but anytime you make any changes to the printer, you should always run a test print to make sure that nothing's changed. So this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to do upgrading the Ender 5. I thought that this would be the easiest and most straightforward of the upgrades. From here, we'll go with upgrading the nozzle. I'll also be doing a video on upgrading the heat bed to a glass heat bed. So if you're interested in more Ender 5 reviews, please subscribe down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. And thanks for joining me here on Cozy Fabrications. Bye, everybody.